It is because of ignorance. That's number one. Number two, part of why it has persevered is because of the leadership failure, the leadership gap, which is what you are breaching, which is what your leadership, sir, our host, you're breaching that by bringing these two nations together to have real proper dialogue. And as this, as you continue to do this and continue to run this program, you will see that information will become available to our people who are uh, who are confused and the hatred will disappear. So that's the first thing I'll say. The second thing is on the, the topical issue of Lagos being no man's land. Anybody, any evil man who is telling you that Lagos is no man's land is as ignorant, is as daft as daft as a brush. The British have a saying, say, daft as a brush. There can be no more clearer statement that Lagos is Yoruba land than that. It is nonsense. It's complete BS. Okay? Lagos is as much Yoruba land as Enugu is Igbo land. Imagine someone coming to and waking up and say, oh, Enugu is Yoruba land. That's nonsense. It is a, it's, an ill, it's an ill-informed person. Ignorance does a lot of damage, okay? And so we'll fix that by having this kind of dialogue. And I continue to celebrate your leadership uh, for putting this program together and also uh, uh, the example that Professor Kinto has given to us. The final thing I'll say to you is this, and this is for all of us at home to go think about. That's his takeaway. We are a takeaway. At Igbo Global Network, we have defined Nigeria, the Nigeria conundrum as a slave plantation. And if you have not read the Will Lynch letter on how to make a slave, go read it. It's on the internet. Nigeria was designed to be a slave plantation. We, the whole idea is to divide the people, sow discord among them, so that they keep on fighting amongst themselves. Therefore, they never get to lift their head. As they keep on fighting, you keep stealing their resources. As they keep on fighting, you keep manipulating them. On our next program, I'll tell you more about the slave plantation, but go look up Willie Lynch letter on the making of a slave. Nigeria is designed to be a slave plantation. The same rights that Europeans have given to themselves, they refuse us those rights. The same, they talk about democracy, they don't talk about justice, okay? And each time they cause problem among our nations, they say, oh, they gave them five million to, towards their democracy. Five million is not the issue. The issue is justice. The issue is equity. The issue is sowing discord and causing confusion. When the people are left in a state of confusion, they keep on fighting each other. Therefore, they cannot contribute to science and technology. We cannot teach mathematics in Yoruba language or Igbo language. They're not able to teach physics and chemistry in Igbo or Yoruba language. And if you cannot teach mathematics, physics, and chemistry in Yoruba language or Igbo language, you can never compete against the other nations. Your civilization continues to be hindered. Your growth continues to be hindered. Your children continue to speak a foreign language instead of speaking Yoruba language or Igbo language. And so we must borrow ourselves brain. The Yoruba nation and the Igbo nation, you must borrow yourselves brain. I lived in Europe and America now for so many years, like a lot of us. The French, in France, they speak French. They don't speak Yoruba language. In England, they speak English. They don't speak Hausa or Yoruba language. In Germany, they speak Dutch. They don't speak Igbo or Yoruba language. They teach their children up to PhD level in Dutch, in French, in English. Why are our universities not teaching our people in our language? It is a deliberate design to keep our civilization down. If Yoruba nation had been left the trajectory in which they were going before all of this nonsense, it would be a whole different country by now. And so we must borrow ourselves brain, we must think for ourselves, we must keep the third party out of our relationship, and we must make up our mind 
that we are not enemies, but we're friends who allowed enemy to come between us and we must solve that problem. It is not a responsibility that all of us have, which uh, the late sage gave to us via Professor Kintoye so many years ago. So now you're a custodian, you're an apostle, an evangelist of that responsibility. So it is now your responsibility, all of you who are hearing us today, who are hearing Professor Kintoye, who are Listen to this conversation that our moderators put together. It is now your responsibility to bring your leadership to bear to make sure that you make peace between our nations. So focus on our common interests and not what divides us. Because if we do that, I promise you, within a short period of time, we will be a true competitor for Nobel Prize Awards for all manner of inventions around the world. Nigeria is a slave plantation designed purposely to keep the Yoruba nation down and to keep the Igbo nation down. That is the design for Nigeria. It is not for anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, wow. you, said, you said Nigeria is a slave plantation. At least in our next episode, we would you will try to explain that better. So let me give uh, the floor to uh, Olayo Mikweki. Olayo Mikweki, uh, please. Uh, I, just, I just want yeah, I just want to say thank you to my brother, Tony Obuisi. All right, sir. Uh, thank you. That's very little that I one think I'm about to talk. Said in the last few minutes. That's very little. I just want to thank you. If you want to know what is really at the bottom of the Nigerian thing, remember a few things. One. The federal government of Nigeria once decreed that the histories of the various nationalities of Nigeria must not be taught in Nigerian schools. What does that tell you? That the Yoruba must not teach their history in Yoruba schools. Igbo must teach must not teach their history in Igbo schools. Edo must not teach their history in Edo schools. Thieves must not teach their history in thief schools. What does that tell you? That's enslavement. That you are slaves. You have no right to try to lift up your head. That's what it means. Another, uh, let me tell you another story. Our father, Professor Bab Fafunwa, who was dean of the Faculty of Education in Obafemi Awolowo University, started a program in the 1970s, in the late 70s, uh, a program on what he called mother tongue elementary school. Teaching young people in their mother tongue. And he started with the Yoruba language. And it became very popular in the world. UNESCO was so excited, ecstatic about it that they said, okay, we will fund it. So they were funding it in the Obafemi Awolowo University. Then one day, a federal minister, another, and a, a full and a federal minister, phoned the vice chancellor of the University of Obafemi Awolowo University and said, is that program of teaching Yoruba children with by Yoruba still going on? And the vice chancellor said, yes, sir, it is going on. And he said, okay, the instruction from the federal government is that it should be shut down. <laughs> the vice chancellor answered, no, we cannot shut, shut it down because we don't finance it. It is UNESCO that finances it. And uh, the, uh, the Honorable Minister answered, are you telling me, Mr. Vice Chancellor, that the next will run Nigeria for us? Are you telling me, Mr. Vice Chancellor, that UNESCO will run Nigeria for us? I say the federal government of Nigeria says, shoot down that program, shut it down. That's the kind of country we live. You don't you must, it does not matter that it was your life, it was the language too. That
If it was a go to that some university professor in Nusuka started to use, they would say, shut it down also. It is the same thing. We are living in a slave car, and the answer is to liberate ourselves from a slave car. Uh, thank you very much. I don't want to say more tonight. So, thank you, sir. Baba. So, I think now I give Olaya Nikweki floor. Please, Olaya Nikweki, do you want to ask Baba a question or you want to ask uh, Mr. Tony? You look uh, like thank you so much to um, <laughs> our, our prof. And I've been listening quietly behind. Uh, it's great to to have you and to hear you speak because um, not until we realize the power of your knowledge and history that you have given us to play with, and it's really helping in this discussion of the Yoruba nation and likewise educating us. Uh, I can assure you that uh, the job that you've given us from all the medias, we are working back to back on it. Uh, we are treating your uh, the goodwill to the uh, the good news to prosperity. We are currently discussing on my side uh, the youth uh, program, and while I was having transmission at about two a.m these early hours, uh, many of our youth, and this also will go to our guest, Mr. Tony, we've seen many of our youth that have gone into crimes, uh, they've gone into all kinds of manners of what Nigeria has turned them into. The same problem existed, according to Professor Adebanji Akitoi, uh, in Singapore, when they were pulling out from Malaysia, and we've seen the transformation of Singaporeans uh, in the last you know, uh, decades. My question to the, uh, our guest is, what kind of future, because they, they say, I, I've listened to you know, the, the, the issues, and I always say that if we were never amalgamated, which is the first problem in 1914, we might likely have tension and issues between us and the Igbos, just like the Germans have problems with the English. Even within the UK, the Wales and the Scottish, they have problems between each other. But it seems that everybody doesn't want us to talk about the, the foundation of the 1914. But I know that the, the Yoruba would have done better because the the Yoruba newspaper that was established in 1850 in Abel is about almost the same years ahead of the New York Times. And I, saw, I, I can see that the president or the presidency responded back to you know, the article that came out from New York Times. But it seems not to be talking to the same of what we are discussing or, or in what Babakitoye has told us. To talk about so in the topic that we are treating right now is about the youth program what do we do in the near future when we have these two nations which i believe is coming up it's going to come it doesn't matter what anybody is saying what kind of youth program can we think of that could be of benefit on the both side because i know within even european countries and other countries they have youth programs to support each of their countries. So my question is, how do we develop a youth program between the Yorubas and the Igbos? Because so much tension have occurred in the last 63 years of the zoo country, because I call Nigeria the zoo. What program do you think we can put together so that we can start allowing you know, the, the tension that have occurred in the last 63 years of the independent that was never given to us, and in the last 110 years of a fraudulent amalgamation by the British. And I know maybe Baba might also want to top up on that, but that question is going to Mr. Tony. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Amami. Uh, youth program. Uh, yeah, well, okay. I mean, Baba can also help us uh yeah baba can then top it up on us all right, thank, thank you. you yeah 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I um, uh, Mr. Oyuki, I celebrate you. Pleasure to have you here, sir, in this dialogue. I, I'm, I've been following your work, uh, you know, for the past two years, and I, I celebrate your leadership, your example, and, uh, um, and the passion with which you have continued to work with not just uh, Sunday Boho, but uh, the Yoruba people. And uh, indeed, uh, your partnership with, uh, you know, with Simon um, and uh, Ibo Nation as well. You know, your, your work is, uh, is a testament of your leadership uh, and your generosity. And all of us, uh, I pay tribute to your leadership, sir. So. Um, the 1914 amalgamation um, um, was forced upon us. Our, our fathers did not choose that amalgamation. It was forced upon us. And that's why we call Nigeria a slave plantation. It was designed consciously. It wasn't accidental because when you take a set of people, peoples, 300 different nations, and bring them together by force, under the force of the sword, there's no way they're going to make progress. There's no way. Look at Europe. How many are they in Germany? How many is England is how many? 60 million? Several nations in, in, in Europe are under 30 million, but they're individual nations. Berlin Conference, 1886, when they invaded Africa and decided to cause chaos and confusion and committed all manner of criminality, all, all manner of criminality. Um, it was by design. Nigeria was by design. This is what uh uh, the Yoruba point that you both need to understand, the Nigerians need to understand. Nigeria was designed purposely, consciously, to be a slave plantation to stifle our growth, our progress. And just to corroborate what you were saying about the uh, media in 1850 in Yoruba land, I also heard that television was uh, a black and white TV uh, was a uh, produced, first of all, in Yoruba land, just as Coco House was, before South Korea. And imagine that time as far back as then and now. So if Yoruba nation was left on its own, on the trajectory, the trajectory in which they were going, of course they'd be competing with Europe now. Well, of course to be major competitors with Japan and so on and so forth. So our, our the staffing of our growth, our development was by this why? This is what all of us need to understand. Nigeria means nigger area. Nigger area. Now you go figure that out. For all of us listening, it's like uh, uh, a man and a woman get married and they have a baby. And then a foreigner comes to name your child. Nigeria means nigger area, slave area. So whether you're Igbo or Yoruba or Teen or Hausa, Nigeria was designed to be a slave plantation to keep all of us down so that we never get to make progress. So in direct response to your question, what can we do to correct the errors of the past? What were, this program is part of that. This program that Yoruba Nation has put together is part of what we need to be doing to fix the problems. And so, I, again, I celebrate our host and his team for putting the program together. And I think that um, as we continue to work together and dialogue, we will come up with other programs uh, where we'll continue to have this dialogue and share the information and our people to become aware. Um, and finally, I will say that we must tell our people to keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. Anybody dividing Iwo and Yoruba nations, anybody, politician, foreigner, white supremacist, whatever, anybody sowing discord, talking about division between the Iwo and Yoruba nation is your enemy. That person does not want our progress. We are individual nations. We should be growing at our own pace, at individual nations. And if we do that, we will prosper and we will do business 
Even the people who are talking about Ndibo in Lagos, Ndibo don't want to be in Lagos. They don't want to be in Lagos. They want to be in their own nation, in their own country. The Yoruba nation can impose visas. And Ndibo would gladly pay. And they'll come do business. And they'll go back home. So on, our people need to understand that we must keep our eyes on the ball. We have an enemy that is trying to sow discord. And with this information that uh, coming from this broadcast today from uh, Baba Kintoye, passed down to us, in, indeed instruction, not just information, instruction from the late sage, passed down to us via Professor Kintoye, that the Iwo and Yoruba nation must figure out a way to work together and not allow any division amongst them. If we do that, we're going to be successful. I will be glad we did. Thank you, sir. Baba, any any addition to this, sir, Daddy? Yes, yeah, the the path to our achieving everything that my brother just said is we must have our two different countries quickly, and then let the spirit of African unity operate among us in our schools among our youth, in our places of work, everywhere, even on the farms, in our radio station, in our television station, everywhere, so that everybody knows that there is a duty that the Yoruba nation owes to the black race. And everybody knows, every good person knows that there is a duty that the Igbo people owe to the Yoruba, uh, to the black race. And that with the only way we can get it done is to collaborate, to cooperate, to join hands together. That is it. A program like that should be very easy to do once we have our separate countries. I, I, I sometimes sit around and think about such programs. I was invited to give a lecture in Enugu in uh, twenty uh, tonight in, in twenty eighteen. 2017, uh, and I gave a lecture on Igbo and Yoruba youths. Your duties and responsibilities. That made me a lot of friends among Igbo youths. Yes, we have a lot to do. Listen, the Yoruba are the largest single ethnic group in Black Africa. The Hausa are the second largest and the Igbo are the third largest. The three largest black nations are in Nigeria. Abusa Tafawa Malewa said uh, during a visit to the University College in Banner in 1964 that one of the greatest problems of Nigeria is that the three largest black nations are in this one country. So we are large, we are a large nation, we are a strong nation. And not only are the Yoruba and the Igbo large nations, they are also very dynamic nations. They have given, they have invested. more in education than Thank you.